course, yeah, pre-war formal wear. Uh, for folks that don't know what pre-war formal wear does, uh, we'll, we'll read the card here. So it's a uh, two and a white for an equipment. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, and you attach pre-war formal wear to it. Uh, an equipped creature gets plus two, plus two, and has vigilance. Uh, equips for three, uh, and basically, yeah, you can get like your your uh, flicker wisp back from the graveyard, and you can blink the pre-war formal wear, and then get back something else. Uh, you could. Uh, be able to, you know, blink your witch enchanter and destroy something. Uh, you know, it's get back your witch enchanter from the graveyard and destroy something. Like, there's all sorts of things that this card does that's really, really strong. Yeah. Witch enchanter, only a one of, but a pretty powerful addition from the Modern Horizons 3. Just mm-hmm. having access to be able to search for a land and have the flexibility of being able to destroy enchantments. I think uh, all of those like uh, MDFCs from that cycle are just like really, really strong. Yeah, the fact that they enter untap and just have reasonable stats and bodies on right. the other side and effects yeah. is very, very powerful. We've seen the uh, like the black ones, like the the Bogger Harbin, the Bogger card, and um, the. Uh, Fell the Profane, I want to say it is, the, yes. the, the kill spell yeah. uh, in the, like the Oops All Spells decks. Uh, yeah, but Fell, Fell is also a card that sees play in a, a lot of different black decks, especially ones that are playing Chrome Mox. Yeah. It's just a, it's a card that's not too... Uh, not bad on rate and pitches the Chrome Mox and is a land itself, so right. it's very nice for that style deck. The, uh, the other upside of uh, uh, getting to see David Lance play, and I always love see getting to see David Lance play because he's an excellent Death and Taxes player. He's very good at what he does. Uh, but uh, the other nice thing upside of getting to see David play is his deck is so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> All sorts of foils here. Yeah. Oh, so there was a Thoughtseize and a Daze. It's like David kept a one land vile hand here. Oh, uh, no. There's a Prismatic Vista. Yeah. But that vial is going to put in some work here. Yeah, it seems to be really, really heavily uh, leaning on that vial. It frees up oh, his... Oh, no. Spirit of the oh, Labyrinth. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so he just puts back two cards. <laughs> yup. Oh. oh. Yeah. You cannot... You have to put yeah, back the, yeah. the cards from the brainstorm. Yeah, you have to be very careful when there's a vial on two. Oh, Both boy. cards like Orcish Bowmaster and the much <laughs> worse Spirit of the Labyrinth. Oh man, yeah, but Spirit of the Labyrinth is like just like insane tempo here. Yeah, like that's that's just absolutely absurd tempo. Yeah, uh, it, they they have to. It shuts off the frog. Uh, you know, it, it makes that all worse. Like, yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> Man, that, that's that changes brainstorm from being very good to discard two cards, <laughs> right? Which uh, not not exactly the best exchange for this mid range deck. And one of the reasons why uh, I I pick David as pretty reasonable favorite here. We'll see what Matthew is able to develop in spite of this, but uh, it is going to be a lot to come back from here. Yeah. Even even though David is struggling on lands, he has an active vial. There doesn't appear to be a brazen borrower to bounce it yet. Um, if we can, you know, bounce the vial and then, you know, kind of reset David and keep him just casting spells on his two lands, there's a. Uh, there's a world in which we can get come back into this game, but I see a fatal push. Yeah, fatal. The problem is fatal push doesn't actually stop the vial from doing from <laughs> just completely <laughs> taking over. This so game. if you fatal push the the spirit of the labyrinth uh, to unlock that, uh, he could go get pre war formal wear yeah, and just get it. Back. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it. Oh, just get sashed. Yeah, he doesn't really know that his opponent isn't on scam yet. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me to get hit to see him preactively uh, or proactively get the lion sash just to cover that angle. Yeah. Um, there isn't anything like that to be worried from, but it is a way that David could could turn this from winning game to a losing game is if the opponent just gets on a Troxa and then draws six cards and suddenly right all the mistakes with the brainstorm are are recovered. 
However, Matthew doesn't really have any resale button like that available to him. <laughs> and sometimes, with Spirit of the Labyrinth attacks. <laughs> yeah? Mm. Yeah, Fatal Push. It's already done its job. Yeah, yeah, it has. Because I'm pretty sure he put back one of the brainstorms he had in his hand. <laughs> so... Oh no, there is one. I see I see yeah, a brainstorm. But I think Vile is still on two here, so you still have to be careful. Like I see two brainstorms and a uh, brazen borrower. Alright, well we do have the brazen borrower, so Oh no. <laughs> I can wait. Put another spirit of the labyrinth in <laughs> Do we have So uh, yeah, we, we got a the petty theft to bounce it back. Never resolved, but this is not really a great exchange here. No, not at all. Yeah, we also have the option of just uh, proactively bouncing the vial, and then in response to David trying to activate it, we can resolve our brainstorm when we know the shields are down. Yeah, just yeah, that's uh, true. kind yeah. of reset some tempo in our favor. Um, yeah, but, minimal of resolving the brainstorm. Yeah, Let's see how much longer will. I did see a nether goyf that he can't cast this turn. Yeah, but... Yeah, David is going to be pretty low on lands here, which is... relevant. Oh, oh, oh. Using... Yeah, just going to get the, um, the equipment in play while he has the opportunity to. Yeah. Make sure there's no great arch against... Again, he doesn't... There's nothing that Matthew has shown that he's not on scam, which is something that is kind of funny if we go into a post-board game and David still thinks he's on the scam deck and he yeah. just doesn't have any elements. Could be could be a little bit awkward for David. But right. It's, it's very hard to tell that so far. As soon as yeah. we see like a nether boy, the jig is up. Right. So I would almost rather just not play the nether boy here. Like, we're so far behind... If we're going to lose anyways, I don't really want to give up too much information going into sideboarding. So there's awkward cards like Containment Priest that are, and Surgical Extraction coming in for David when they just don't matter in the matchup. It's a way to kind of steal a, a game two. Right. Attacking with the... Sometimes Stoge Forge and Mystic Attacks. <laughs> yeah. The, I mean, the funny thing about Lion Sash is it is both an equipment and a creature you can vial in. Yeah. So um, you, you don't actually have to leave it up if that's the only... Uh, like it is, it was filed in, or it, it was put in off Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He put it off Stoneforge Mystic. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, it looks like he's deciding if he wants to play Emperor Bones and Nether Goyf, but I think both of those are kind of bad for him here, just because. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Emperor Bones. They reveal a lot of information, and Emperor Bones is notably a card that does get shut down. Pretty hard. So yeah, that that, but, that card if people don't know what that card is because that's pretty new. It's Modern Horizons three. So it's one in a black for a skeleton noble. Uh, it's a two two. At the beginning of your uh, turn, you exile up to one target card from a graveyard. You can pay one in a black and adapt two. And whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on it, you put a creature card exiled with it onto the battlefield under you control with a fun, uh, finality counter on it. Gains haste and you sack it at the beginning of the next end step. So uh, yeah, but David has options to respond to. The, the Emperor of Bones doing whatever it wants to do with just using Lion Sash. Yeah. So Even though the Sash isn't getting to be used to completely shut down the deck like you thought, it is still pretty relevant against opposing Emperor of Bones. Just it's also very down. relevant against this Nether Groif. Yeah. You can, sure. you can uh, exile uh, various card types. Yeah. Also, it just outgrows Nether Groif pretty fast. Yes. Yeah. Both growing itself and shrieking the Poison Groif. Now, notably, it does only count cards in its uh, owner's graveyard. It's not symmetrical like all of the other glyphs. It's only that player's graveyard. Right. So it, it is much easier to shrink. Vile back in that Spirit of the Labyrinth while it has the, the chance to be there. Yeah. Third time it's any play in this game. This is a different <laughs> Spirit of the Labyrinth. Well, it's the, it's the second one. Yeah. The second time. Oh, okay. Yeah. David's got quite a... I mean, David's got enough mana to do what he needs to do, and Vile. 
on yeah, three. Like right. final on three, he leaves up the activation with um, with Sash, uh, prevent any shenanigans from going on with Emperor. Yeah, there's a Psychic Frog. Psychic Frog is a card that can is a reasonable game plan here uh, for Matthew, um, but. It can't draw cards, so we're going to have to start growing it. Um, but Dave is just so ahead on cards at this point. It's hard for me to imagine that he doesn't have some way to answer. Oh, things. yeah, absolutely. Or, you know, and, and the vial on three really means it's very likely that he has an answer between you know, something like Skyclave or just Recruiter for a Solitude or anything of that nature. It's just very, very likely that... My experience of watching David play Magic has been always consistently been uh, that he tends to think like six turns ahead. Right. And it's it's definitely fun to watch that uh, that thought process take shape over the course of the game. Yeah. There are definitely things he sees that nobody else sees. Uh, so yeah, he he's definitely got a game plan here now yeah. that he knows what he's up against. Yeah. He he doesn't have to worry about losing in the near future. He has to figure out how this game gets turned around. And earlier in the game, he thought it was going to be from reanimating something like an Atraxa or right. uh, or an Archon, which is why he got the Lion Sash. And now he sees he doesn't actually have to worry about that at all. Maybe he has to do worry about something like a Murktide, so he might start eating a bunch of instant sorceries out of the yard, uh, just controlling the Psychic Frog, making sure he doesn't get beaten up too much by it before he finds an answer to it. Of which his deck plays many. Right. Yeah. I see a recruiter of the guard. Yeah, and that that can get a multitude of ways to deal with it. Right. We're talking about solitude, we can get Skyclave that we can vial in. Just got Flicker Wisp to reset all the counters that have been put on it. Right. Just a ton of ways to uh, deal with it. Ah, yeah. Yeah, he's giving him. Yep. Given the Psychic Frog flying and... But it doesn't do anything in this scenario because uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth. Right, I mean... You're not you reaping start, that benefit. Yeah, you can start trying to push damage. David just making sure that no shenanigans happen, I guess. Um, eating the Psychic Frog. Yeah, and then also, in case there's something like a Murktide in the opposing deck, you can start to manage that. With um, well, there is no more cards in uh, Matthew's graveyard at this point, right? So this Nethergoyf is just Nethergoyf is not doing anything. Emperor not really doing anything because we can always eat that. <laughs> Flicker Wisp, Flicker Wisp. <laughs> uh, yeah. Getting Flicker Wisp with Recruiter of the Guard. Oof. Yeah, there's. Uh, I'll be honest. I do not see how David can lose this game from this spot. spot. Yeah, yeah, he's flicker resping in it. He's up, activating in his upkeep and then ticking it up to four. Right. Starting to reach for a massive Yorion. Oh, yeah. Me? All right. Attacking with his lion's eyes, like, what, a 5-5? Five, five? Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. She has jump block with the, the zero one one goif. Yep. Uh, okay, so I don't know if it's in Matthew's deck. The way that David loses is he Yorions every single one of his creatures, and then his opponent stifles them returning to play. No stifles. All right. Well, not that I. I don't say. know how he loses anymore. <laughs> that, that's the only possible yep, way. Is, no stifles. But that's something that David has to be thinking about because it's pretty common that these decks play stifle. Right. But if you blink out all of your creatures and then they all get eaten by stifle. I see a solitude. There's a Tamio. Yeah. A lot of things have to, would have to. Would have to go wrong for that to be a way David loses this game, but this game might might go on for a couple more turns. But it's it's all but locked up here, I believe. Yeah, just too many resources for at David Lance's disposal. The attacking with the Emperor bones. Okay. Yeah, I mean it can always grow to a four four and trade with some things. I don't really think David cares that much. Right. Uh, yeah. Just. Let's exile some of my own stuff now and yeah. put bigger, make this uh, lion sash even bigger. Probably just make a 
push at lethal here. I have to imagine he's close. Wasteland, that's pretty good. Yeah, put two more permanents in the graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> Just attack for, for a lot of damage. Yeah. Force the chump block with the Tamio on the... The Lion Sash. Lion yeah. Sash. And... Take six, eight. Quite a bit. I think yeah. eight, yeah. yeah. But That's rough. I mean, there, there will only be one more turn of this game, I think. Uh, and then we, we have instant speed Yorion to flicker everything in case there's... Did you put Yorion in hand already? Uh, no, it looks like it's still off to the side. Yeah. Huh. So I guess he's holding up Solitude. Oh, that's true. For, yeah. I mean, he can violent Solitude. Right. Just, just deal with whatever happens here. Yeah. I saw a Brainstorm, and <laughs> Brainstorm is real bad. Yeah, not, not a very relevant thing. Yep. Exile. Never runs. Yep, they are going to game two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not much more to be had there. All right. So looking at sideboarding here. Yeah. So David has things like Grafty Girls Cage, Fairy Macabre. I don't think he's really worried about those cards here. Uh, Path to Exile. Path to Exile is the only card I think that David's interested in. Yeah. There's a lot of anti graveyard cards, but since we saw Nether Goyf and Emperor of Bones, it really shows. Hey, I'm not doing things that are that unfair with my graveyard, so I think he'll be satisfied with just Lion Sash, um, and, and just board in Path to Exile as a way to remove a frog that just gets out ahead super early and right. starts threatening to draw too many cards. I don't think like White Orchid Phantom comes in at all. No, I have to imagine it's more for the Cloud Post style decks yeah. and, and things of that nature. Yeah, the, I, I think just Path to we've already seen no multiple sense. basics out of Matthew's deck. There's no reason to start. And so, let's see what we got here. We've got Brazen Bar, we've got Consigned to Memory, Dark Betrayal, J Fell, which is kind of interesting, uh, Force of Negation, Harbinger of the Seas, uh, Null Rod might come in, just a combat vial. Uh, I imagine you might want Snuff Out. Yeah, I imagine it'll be Snuff Out, Toxic Deluge, Brazen Borrower, potentially fell over things like this Nihil spell bomb, which is just terrible. Yeah. Maybe it can trim on some of the worst pieces of uh, counter magic like the days. Orgers Will Master is not really at its best in this matchup. Um, no, not we, anymore. We, we can trim on things like that. Uh, to just try to have more impactful early plays, a little bit better removal, a little bit um, just better answers into the things that David the yeah. threats that David's going to try to present. And, and Null Rod at least shuts off, like, Lion Sash. Yeah, it is an option here. It's hard to know if we'll go for it. We do have things like Mishra's Bauble that awkwardly shuts down, and David's pretty good at answering it uh, with multiple copies of Skyclave, right. and which... Uh, um, it's more like a answer. speed bump card, if anything. Yeah. Yeah. On the play, I don't know if he'll be reaching for it. I think it's a lot more defensible on the draw when your opponent can uh, really start taking up their vial a lot faster. I think it's a lot better on the draw than it is on the play. Whereas on the play, you can kind of tempo it out with things like this, Brazen Borrower, and potentially even Consign, which is a reasonable card in this matchup, just countering random yeah. flicker effects or tutor effects, same as we saw in the last game where... Oh, that could be used to, con to uh, counter the Yorion. Right. Yeah. The Yorion bringing with things back into play. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, Katsai, Katsai is so flexible. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh... And something I imagine gets even bigger after the ban, because you don't have to worry... Like, currently a lot of graveyard slots have to be used to worry about um, graveyard synergies. Right. And so once your sideboard kind of clears up, you're able to play these more uh, interactive cards. Oh. There's... A consign field. Oh, all right. Looks like we are boarding in consign. <laughs> all right. And David saw it. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh boy. No, knows there's something to worry about. Can also just counter the turn on vial. Um, can't counter things like wasteland, but.
shuffling yeah. up here. Waiting for this game to get started. Yeah. I think David, in his opening hand, is looking for mostly removal spells. Again, contain that early Psychic Frog. Make sure it doesn't draw too many cards. Things like Aether Vile, Mother of Runes to protect uh, your own creatures. Matthew's side really want to just kind of play a protected uh, queen game plan. It's kind of how I like to attack Death and Taxes as the Delver side. So things like Psychic Frog or Cameo early, backed up with uh, cheap counter magic like Force of Will, Days. Days not quite as much, uh, but just make sure your threats get through early because it's as soon as the game starts extending and you're not you don't have a massive blade in cards, it's it, it gets very, very tough to develop and counteract all of the uh, all of the cards your opponent's going to have access to. Right. Death and Taxes is, is a deck that the longer the game goes, the better they are at finding the correct answers and um, just kind of controlling everything that every a aspect of the game, like we saw in the last one, where they're just he just made sure that there were no outs left. Yeah, yeah, a lot of inevitability right. uh, from from that side, uh, and again with uh, with a player of the kind of caliber that David is uh, on this deck, uh, definitely uh, definitely showcases a lot of his thinking forward ahead. Right. I know David Mulligan, but I didn't see what he's mulliganing to. That this looks like a six here. Yeah. Oh, our opponent fetched a lot of basic lands last game, so maybe we don't need wasteland. Hard to rely on it. Yeah, that's. I think that's that's totally fine. Fetching. I mean, if we can get the turn one Tamio, and there's not a Crocus on the other side, we can. I I saw Crocus. <laughs> well, in that case, it's gonna be a lot harder. <laughs> right. I definitely did see a Caracas, yeah. yeah Tam Tamiya is very strong if you can flip it early with something like a Brainstorm. Because uh, this deck is not always great at removing Planeswalkers. Yeah, there's Tamiya. But <laughs> Caracas notably very good at stopping this damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I just heard him next door laugh about that too. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Yeah, that, but that, that's pretty. Weird. It doesn't stop it forever. You can stop it from attacking, but you can't really stop something like a brainstorm from flip, like just going. They can't. They can't ever cast a brainstorm into it with it untapped. Yeah, but you start getting clues as it's attacking, and so you'll probably see it. Uh, and look, yeah, bounce it before combat. Yeah. If he'd have had a brainstorm, there it would have been much better. Right. Like, yeah, there was you, a brainstorm you can there. Respond to the crocus with the brainstorm and then flip it. Yeah. yeah. So, but just the ponder, it's a little harder to interact favorably. And maybe we see a redeployed Tamio just to kind of port down the crocus, make sure it's being used for the reason that we want it to be, which is just keeping this Tamio in check. Not really where Matthew wanted to be in the opening stages of this game. But I do think that I saw a uh, Psychic Frog in the Ponder. So that is going to be a powerful thing if we're able to deploy it pretty soon and back that up with Counter Magic. Right, yeah. Which is, I think, the premier threat in this matchup. Uh, that, that alongside the one copy of Murktide Regent are really how... Uh, Matthew has to look to finish out this game. Goif. Another Goif. Yeah, just a 2-3, but again, David's pretty good at managing the graveyard and putting a lot of random 1-1 one -one bodies into play. Um, right. Or just exiling it. It's not the most reliable threat at the moment. Flooded Strand. like the uh, very pretty Modern Horizons 3 Flooded Strand Retro Foil. Yeah. And just a Mother of Runes, just kind of setting up, leaving up the Caracas for the Tamio, making sure it doesn't get too out of hand. Although, if, if there's two blue mana up at any point, it's very hard to firmly play around the 
Just fatal push the, uh, grow the goif a little bit. Yeah. yeah, because you can always brainstorm in response to the Krakus activation to flip it and kind of counter the trigger, so it's a, kind of a little bit of game of cat and mouse as soon as the Tamiyo hits play right. with blue mana of a I feel like he's not going to play the Tamiyo back out. It's not the worst. It depends on how your hand lines up. Right. Um, it's also... You're also forcing them to do it. Right. So. It does kind of keep the land tapped. Oh, but no third land. Probably why we saw all the basics. Yeah. Just ensure that we have mana even if our opponent has wasteland. But it does mean that we're not going to have access to that Tamiyo plus Brainstorm one I mentioned because we had to fetch two basics. Right. Um, even though, as we know, David bottomed the wasteland here. Yeah. Because of this potential scenario. So as soon as you see your opponent fetching a lot of basic lands in, in these tempo decks, it makes a... You can just not prioritize wasteland a, a ton, but still threaten it. <laughs> just force pitch the Tamiyo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Tamiyo not doing a ton of work here, and Spirit of Labyrinth is a card that caused him a lot of issues in the prior game. Yeah. And we do kind of have a clock going with this Nether Goy. Yeah, and there's a uh, Wasteland. So. Uh, but yeah, he wanted to resolve, really wanted to resolve that brainstorm. So. Yeah, look for another land, but I think the only land we have here is the Wasteland. Yeah. Which, that's not hateful, but there's two basics in play in a Caracas. Yeah, so we, like, we do get to kill the Caracas, which is good for the prospects of future cameos. I don't even know if that's correct, though. Like, I feel like it, if you're, unless you're really wanting to offset their white mana development, I feel like you could sandbag it for something worse, but what is their worst to hit? Yeah, I think Caracas is really the card that you'd want to hit, but we do just see an Emperor of Bones come down. That seems uh, that feels like a, a more correct yeah. thing to do. Also, putting a mother runes into play at instant speed does give you a lot of protection from a lot of the things that <laughs> David is trying to do. If you can just instant at instant speed put in a mother, mother runes. runes to protect your own creature from oh yeah, like a sword yeah, because it gets haste. That's great. That, that is pretty neat and something I have not seen before. Yeah, that's clever. That's for sure. Stoneforge Mystic. Just Force well, Pitch, consign to memory. Yeah. It's going to be pretty strong here. It's going to need a powerful follow-up. Kind of prevent... Stem some of this bleeding here. Yeah, for sure. He's... We might be going to a Game 3 on this one. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly the start that David needed here, right? He has the... Oh, Path to Exile. Interesting. That could be good or that could be bad. Yeah. Is he what? not searching? Pro looks like he only has the two basics here. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But this Nethergoyf is it's doing some work. Yeah, I mean, it is the early threat that we talked about. It's not quite as good as an early frog connecting a bunch of times, but it is... A reasonable clock to start putting pressure on David, make him use his resources. However, uh, we are down a bunch of cards because of these force of wills, and so it's it's going to be hard to keep up as soon as David plays anything like a recruiter or a skyclave or anything of that nature. Uh, we're just kind of running out of gas here, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, David kept that on top with the Surveil Land, so that yeah. must be a pretty reasonable I, card. I think most lands and most spells are good here for David, so it's a good ah, place Skyclave. Yeah, it's certainly one of the things he's looking for. Just get the clock out, start stabilizing the board pressure. Uh, just you stem the bleeding, make sure there's nothing too threatening coming out from the other side. Um, can't yeah. be that much counter magic. We're not worried about days. Um, really need to have a frog this turn to have any no, sort no of... No frog. Yeah. And 
That, that was the that was the one turn window that we got to yep. start. Ah, the Orion to hand. Kind of yeah. expecting to hopefully cast the Orion or yeah. get a get a big creature into play. And the no attack there, I think, is respecting Orcish Bowmaster. There's no reason to run your your creature into a bowmaster. Yeah. Have it trade unfavorably. I and saw uh Tamio and uh, a fatal push, I think. Yeah, I mean both of those are pretty reasonable here, right? We can wasteland the Caracas. Fatal push the Skyclave, start stabilizing the board, uh, and then we don't have to worry about the Caracas um, for the Tamiya at this point. Yeah, so. yeah. So Fatal push, and then he gets, what, a 1-1? One, one? Yep. Yeah. Just a 1-1, one, one, but when your opponent's at 8, uh, you know, you're trying to threaten them. It's better than nothing. Doesn't look great. Right. Oh, no. It looks like that was on his own turn. Yes, yeah, that was on his turn. Yeah, he did that, which, I mean, just casting Yorion. Oh, no, Witch Enchanter. Just four mana 2-2 two two here, yep. which is notably larger than the 1-1 one one illusion. Yep. So. That's, that's, that's not, not bad. Yeah. It's still a card that attacks. Well, more importantly, it blocks here. Don't really need to attack. And we have the Tamio, but again, our lands are oh, frog. all right, frog. That's that's all we needed. We but have... his he doesn't have many cards in hand here. Yeah, and that Yorion. Yeah, and we... David will probably wait until he has the sixth land. I imagine to play around the days because it's the only one card that completely punishes this play. Right. Uh, and we really want that Yorion in play, so probably going to surveil, just looking for. Any land or anything that deals with frog, either one is great here, um, and just kind of reduce the amount of, again, reduce the threats, reduce the potential top decks. Right. Uh, and still, get, still, this gets surveil. Yeah. Yeah, got to surveil. Keeping that on top, though, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of cards we leave on top here, right. so it's it, very hard to narrow down. Oh. Looks like a Caracas was kept, and then, yeah, now we have the Yorion through the, uh, through a potential days. Just yeah, yeah, you don't, don't need, need, don't need, need to, blink. to blink anything. Yeah, yeah, just need it as a blocker. Yeah, it's it's not this the Psychic Frog at this point is not punching through this not 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 at all. Uh, what he's at what two cards in hand? Yeah, I mean we have some of our removal spells that can kill this Yorion, but. And now we're down to one card. I don't know. I see two. He yeah. had three cards in hand. Now he's at two. Yeah, but we have the Crocus again. So Tamio is back to just going back to hand. And really feels like every turn this game goes on, the window keeps closing for Matthew here. Just needed to. Yeah, plow, yeah. In plowing the Psychic Frog, that's, that's big. Yep. Uh, yeah, because that's the only way that uh, Matthew kind of gets back into this game. Right. Not really sure what other outs he has. And yeah, David just Again, decides he's ahead enough, just starts attacking. David's playing 40 chess here, <laughs> and yeah, we're just, just living in his world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't need to let your opponent draw a bunch of cards, draw to, like, third land plus toxic deluge, or, like, Double removal spell for Yorion, and then start going ahead. It's Oof. Not easy, but stuck on two lands though, and yeah, just the entirety of the game. Yeah. I mean, he does have Infernal Grasp, I guess, which I think that's a oh, Brazen Bar. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, okay. I imagine just oh, bounce can, in response. Yeah. Ah, uh, so that the uh, borrower doesn't get to go into exile. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Spirit of the Labyrinth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not Matthew's favorite to deal with in this in this match here. Not at all. I think I saw. I think I see a ponder. Yeah, it does make ponder quite a bit worse. Yep. And uh, Tamio into the Crocus again. But just uh, I don't know. 
good attacks and we don't have good blocks. It's yeah, no, there's it's kind of a nightmare scenario. Yep. Cast your Orion. Tim, you can make a clue. Yeah, right? it just, just gets blocked, and there's a you can't even. And the best part about this is you can't even brainstorm in response to the Tim. Right. It will be a bounce now right. because of the spirit. Yeah, it's uh. That is real rough. There's just... Yeah, there's not a lot going on yeah. here, unfortunately. This is the more that... Like you said, the more this game goes on, the more it's in David's favor. Right. Fell! There we are. Yeah. Bounce in response. Ooh, we get to make a clue that we can draw one card with, but... On an opponent's turn. Yeah, yeah. But... Not a great exchange to just trade one fell for one draw. I mean, so. and he's not going to block with that. Well, technically, he could have blocked with the uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth and killed it. Uh, Timmy was flying. Oh, Timmy does have flying. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yes, yeah. you're right. Yes. That's, uh, it's a very important card. <laughs> yes. Text on that card. There's so many card pieces of text on magic cards. Yeah, guys. yeah. It's just. Just like how people just don't randomly remember that Rising Coastless has Reach. Yeah, that. <laughs> that that card, the, the reach on that card is the th fourth line down. Like, yeah, come on, you don't even see it. Yeah, Tamiel, I think flying is the first yeah, card. Yeah, at least. Which, yeah. Which, thank goodness for that. Oh, hey, oh, a third land. That's yeah, that's a third our, colored land. Yeah. It's, I don't really know how we can use it here, but we do have it. What is this? That might be a Merc Tide. That is a Merc Tide. Oh. All right. I mean... That's that's rough. Unless David well, finds a removal spell, then that's rough. The problem is, in, <laughs> unless Matthew has a removal spell, we can block forever with our Yorion. That's true. So, well, you know, we, we don't, we're not in danger just yet because we can just block with Yorion, bounce it with Caracas, and we can just... Oh, there, oh I see a solid... Oh, there's a Path to Exile. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> womp womp. And then we know there's no more lands coming because both those land basics are in play. Yeah. Attack for four. Thinking if we want to block with the Tamio. Ah, yeah, the Tamio can jump block the Yorion if it has to. Yeah, but at that stage of the game. It... Whoa. Mother of Runes. Yeah, get even more protection on your Yorion. Make sure you can force through damage at any point. Right, like, give Spirit of Labyrinth protection from blue if you want to really shove damage here. And, right. Uh, force a force some block force some bad blocks. Yeah. But I don't think David will play that that risky into. No, he's gonna be he's gonna be blocks. super conservative about it. Okay. Right. Oh, that was an infernal grasp. Ooh. Yeah, a little, little bit painful here. Yeah. Uh, yep, and now we can just crock us and attack for four, and that's all she wrote. And he did the crock us on his end step. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. I thought he went to four off. Uh, and I believe that he was at uh, he was technically at 7 not 6 because uh, Infernal Grasp loses 2 life yeah yeah yeah. but uh, Emperor Bones yeah we we have uh, we have 4 attackers to 1 blocker and any 2 are lethal which means even a removal spell is lethal so ah, he's uh, Emperor of Bonesing the Stoneforge Mystic yeah and then here we can even with the hasted Stoneforge Mystic, use it to grab Calder Complete, which does even more damage on right. the turn. Yeah, so he goes, yeah, he goes, yeah, to combat on his turn, gets the, 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 uh, Stoneforge Mystic, puts it into play. Oh, sure. You know, oh, Phantom, Phantom Blade. Sure. Yeah, that's pretty Why good. Not? Yeah, just destroy the, yeah, I mean, uh, the creature. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's a cool play. Wow. Yeah. I'm I'm digging that. That's that's really really fun. So, all right. Uh congrats to David Lance for uh, for showing us how it's going with the